Hello, Randy Rain here, and I've got the clinch. It's a kind of a rare one, I believe. I don't see it very often come up for sale, that's for sure. So I got this one. Pretty cheap. Doesn't work. Need to fix it. This is... Randy's Robot Refurbish! Alright, here we have the clinch by Nico. Uh, it kind of works. It, if you open up the back here, it takes four double A's here. Then the remote control takes a 9 volt, like that. Then when it gets turned on, nothing. But if you kind of see it tries to work. But see, now the arm won't go up. Now the one thing I do like is the switching on how to turn this on and off. It switches right here. If you look right here on these two terminals, when you flip the switch on, those little plastic pieces drop out. And then when you turn it off, they pop out. And all that's doing is stopping the battery from making connection. First thing I do is take these bottom screws off. There's four of them. Okay, that doesn't seem to do much. So there's four screws on the back. And here's the gearbox. Turn it on. Yeah, so what happens is both of them will turn going forward. Then backwards, only one of them will turn. So it goes in a circle. So here, what it comes down to is this one here. Doesn't want to do anything. Huh. Well, now I'm not convinced it's not in here. Let's have a look inside this thing. This actually might be the problem. Well, when I opened it up, this little blob of solder came out. Hopefully that had something to do with it. Okay, I need to open this gearbox up. Something's fishy with it. So there's a little worm drive in there, which turns these gears. And there's this piece. Well, the only thing I can really find is this corrosion. I don't see that being the problem of any of this stuff, but might as well see what I can do. I never have this problem. Usually I just fix a gear or redo some plastic or fix some corroded area and the robot works again. I fixed the corrosion and all the plastic is good, but it still doesn't work. Sometimes it rolls forward and backwards. Sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes its arms goes up and sometimes they don't. Sometimes they do it all on themselves. It's obviously the electronics. I guess I could start replacing capacitors. But I don't want to do that. I need to just start over. Yeah, wait a minute. Yes, start over. Okay, here's the parts I'm going to use. I have the RX480R 4-channel transmitter and receiver circuit here. Over here is a L7805CV 5 volt regulator. Uh, it will put out 5 volts because this can no, go no higher than 5 so this will be taking care of that. I'm going to have several transistors. They are the T 
TIP 110 and the TIP 115. These are the NPN transistors. These are the PNP transistors. This is what I will be using along with a bunch of capacitors and resistors. Let's get started. So let's start with this circuit. On the back of this circuit, you'll see it says ground, positive voltage, D0, D1, D2, D3, and VT, which is what I have drawn down here. I have the negative, the positive, 0, 1, 2, 3, and the VT is the antenna. You will put, of course, ground to here. This will have to get the 5 volts that will be coming through the voltage regulator. Just and then it's coming from positive, so positive is going through the voltage regulator, putting out 5 volts coming into here. And then you have the 0, 1, 2, and 3. And then, of course, this is going to the antenna. Every time you push one of these buttons, either one of these is going to go high. So it's going to go from either a negative state or no charge at all to a positive state. Each one of these will turn on each one of these here. So now we need to make the motor go forward and back. So let's, here's our motor. Here's the two leads coming off of it. So there needs to be a transistor here, a transistor here, and then when there's a transistor here, and a transistor there. Then coming off of the each one of these, so, and this will be the transistors. There'll be two of them, so they'll be connected here and here. So what it's going to be is there's going to be an NPN, a PNP, and then an NPN, and a PNP. So this transistor will turn on by getting a negative charge to here and it will allow a positive charge to go through. This NPN will takes a positive charge to turn on and it will let a negative charge go through. Here is a PNP. The N in the center means negative so this requires a negative charge to be turned on and it will allow a positive go, to go through and this NPN will turn on with the positive charge and allow the negative to go through. So on the back side of these, this NPN, this needs to go to positive, this needs to go to ground, and this one needs to go to positive, and this one needs to go to ground. These come out and they get resistors on them to protect the transistor. These are all one K resistors. So now off of these two will come and connect to this mo side of the motor and then off of these two will come and connect to that side of the motor. And so now on here you connect these two together and you connect these two together. This one will run to an output of the receiver and this one will run to another output of the receiver. Now to make sure that these transistors turn on and off securely, I have another connection here that goes to a, another resistor, which is a 10K resistor, and it's connected to ground. And there's one of those, there's one of those everywhere on the other side of this resistor. And there's one here as well. And that's to keep it in ground. So what that does, if there's no voltage coming here, they will at least have ground to keep the transistor either turned off or on. So let's imagine that this is on and there's no buttons being pushed. And let's say that either means these are putting out no voltage or a negative voltage. So let's just say no voltage is coming out of zero or one here. That means coming into this transistor here is nothing but the is nothing but a negative coming from the one that's grounded here through the resistor. So you're getting a little bit of negative charge, which this is a N, uh, NPN. So that means it needs a positive volt. So here, it's not turning on. This was keep ground is keeping this transistor turned off. So no negative charge 
is coming through there. It's also coming through here, and so there's no voltage, but there is a negative charge coming this way, so it goes through the 10K. It comes up here to this transistor. This one requires a negative voltage, because it's a PNP. -P. So it is turned on. So that allows the positive volts to come up here, and this side of the motor becomes positive. And so the exact same thing is happening on this side. Both of this one is going, is turned off, this one's turned on, and it's allowing a positive voltage to get on the other side of the motor. So the motor needs a positive and a negative, so this motor would not be moving whatsoever. Then let's say you, one of these buttons get pushed, it makes this one go high, so now this has a pos, this zero has a positive voltage, but the one still has a negative voltage. So the positive voltage comes up here, it now goes through here, it's now stronger than this through this resistor, so this becomes positive. So since this is now positive, and it's an NPN, and it turns on with positive, this now allows the ground to come up here. Meanwhile, that positive voltage, this spot here goes from negative to positive, so now positive is coming up here, which means that transistor is not going to be turned on, so it blocks this off. And so now this side is becoming negative. So as long as it's like this, the motor is now getting positive and negative, and it's going to turn in one direction. As Soon as this gets let off, the things reverse, and both sides then go back to positive. If you did the same thing on this side, this side is going to jump negative, and now the motor is going to spin in the other direction. And as soon as you let off, it's going to go back to positive and it's not going to do anything. And so that's how the forward and the reverse is going to work on the robot. But now it has the arms. But with the arms, the motor only has to turn on and stay in one direction. Either direction doesn't matter because it just goes in a circle. So it just needs to turn on. So you don't have to do all this. You only need to do one of these. So I am going to use one transistor. And this is the... N, uh, P, N there, whatever, N, P, N, this will go to ground, and this will go to one side, then the other side will just go straight to positive, you come down here through a 1K resistor, here we'll have another resistor going to ground, this would be the 10K, and then this gets connected to here. So now when this button gets pushed and held down, this turns on, so a positive voltage comes, when, and this is normally negative, so this is turned off, but then when the positive voltage comes to here, it makes everything on this side now positive, which turns on the transistor, which makes this go negative, which before it had no voltage, and now it's positives on this side, the motor will turn on. So that's a simple one. And this is what mine's going to look like. That is that. So I think that's it. I have a battery pack. Here's a geared down motor. And I put a piece of red paper here on the end of it. So it's geared down. It'll turn real slow. You should be able to see it. Now if I put the power onto this thing. Now I should be able to turn. It goes that direction. And it goes that direction. So now I have it hooked up to the transistor that the arms are going to work off. I think it's B. Yeah, hold B down and it turns on. So C and D are forward and reverse, which is here. And then this one is just one direction like that. 
Ah, I'm ready to go inside the robot. Let's go ahead and see what's going on down here. You have a, one motor. You have, a set of, you have a gear system here. There's another one here. If I turn this, this turns, this wheel turns. If I turn it the other direction, this wheel doesn't turn. There's a little switch happening right here. This is negative. The motor was actually connected to here, so it was only getting half of the power. Yeah, so the motor needs to only get three volts instead of all six. The clutch system is obviously in the tire down here, so... Okay, I don't need this one, so I'm going to put it right here. Okay, now I need to cut my circuit down. It's going to get attached down here. So I'm going to have to drill a hole. Alright, this long red one was all of the batteries of positive. It needs to go to my voltage regulator. 6 volts and then it will get regulated down to 5. And that will power the electronics. Orange wire is 3 volts. It's only half of the batteries. That's going to power the motor, so it needs to come into here. So there's three volts positive coming into the transistors. Ground should be taken to all of them. This goes to the drive motor, so that is one of the browns here. And there's two blue wires. And this one should be the arms. All right, so here's the test. This one, backwards, forward, backwards, forwards, arms. This will go straight up to the six volts. Six volts going into here, then out through the switch. And so now this needs to be ground. Where's ground? Okay, so that will have it staying on and blinking when moving, so that'll work for me. Just give it a shot, turn it on, and there it goes. Almost forgot the antenna. So there's the robot back together. There's the original brains of it. Let's give this a shot. Turn this on. So we have forward, backwards, forward, backwards, and the arm. I have these little buttons. They're going to get soldered onto here and they're going to be for this little joystick. Cut this thing down. So I guess the only thing to do with the antenna is to fake it. 
So I added a little piece to the button, makes it work perfect. The joystick can go in. So this little piece goes, that piece goes like that. Hold this piece. Snap that into place. Well, there it is. The clinch that wanted to be brought back again. You never know. Anything has changed inside. Put six batteries inside there. Put a 9 volt inside there. You can turn this on. So, you ready to see it in action? Here's the original guts that was inside of it. Let's see what happens. Well, there it is, Clinch from Nico, brought back and now added to my collection. Hey, if you like this video, please give it a like down below. If you want to see me do more of this, then you need to hit that subscribe button down there. Hey, I've got Facebook channels, everything, you name it. I have a Patreon if you want to help me buy more little robots and get them working again. Please go check that out. Hey, thanks for watching. That was... Randy's Robot Referrals! Walk Walk with me Please Just take my hand